equation 10, so we have two reactions between metal and acid. We have zinc and we have iron. Zinc in the periodic table is Zn, iron in the periodic table is Fe. So they both react with acid. Metal plus acid give you metal salt. So the salt that you get from sulfuric acid is called sulfate salt. And you also get hydrogen gas. Now what is so special about this is this is SO4 2 minus. And because you have SO4 2 minus, so that means you must have Zn2 plus ions and you have Fe2 plus ion. As they have the same charges, plus 2 and minus 2, that's why you have one of each, one of the cation and one of the anion. Plus 2 cancel minus 2, plus 2 cancel minus 2. So that is what you call ion 2 sulfate because ion can exist in various oxidation number, including ion 2 and ion 3. As you know from your practical studies, test for ion 2 ion, test for ion 3 ion. But zinc, usually we don't write zinc 2, okay? Because zinc obviously exists as just one oxidation number there, which is zinc 2 plus. They don't have characteristic of transition metal as zinc 2 plus in solution is colorless and zinc solid is mostly white, whereas iron form compounds which are colored and iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus are both colored in solution. Now what do we have here? We have a calculation question. 0.65 gram sample of zinc. So we have reaction with excess sulfuric acid. So we don't use the one in excess. What is the volume of hydrogen gas? Hydrogen is a gas there and zinc is a solid there. We have to relate reacting mass where we have to think about molecule to mass of MR or molecule to mass of AR for element. And then this is versus the mole of gas, which is volume of gas divided by the molar volume of gas as stated at the bottom of your periodic table. One mole of any gas occupied 24 dm cube volume. They want the volume of hydrogen gas. You will see that the unit given in the answer space there is in dm cube. So we have to express it in dm cube divided by 24 dm cube per mole. Then if I just start comparing my mole ratio, I want to find something to do with hydrogen, so I will put the hydrogen on top, and I have zinc at the bottom. From the balance equation, one mole of hydrogen comes from one mole of zinc. So one mole of hydrogen, equal mean equal, so whatever on top, equal to whatever from the top. At the bottom is mole of zinc, so it's one mole of zinc from the balance equation. On the far right is the actual amount that reacted. I will have the volume of hydrogen gas divided by the molar volume of hydrogen gas this would be in dm cube because it's in dm cube per mole as stated in your predict table for free. Now zinc, zinc in your predict table, the relative atomic mass is given as 56, I believe. No, 56 is iron, 65 is zinc. So the relative atomic mass of zinc from the predict table is 65. So at the bottom is mass of uh, AR. 0.65 gram of zinc, gram over gram per mole mass of AR like that and your job really is to make the volume of H2 the subject so it's going to be 1 over 1 time 0.65 over 65 and this is equal to volume of H2 over 24 move up the 24 to the other side if you can't see that I'm going to show you once and then what I'll do is I will do them in the next step so the 24 there divided by 24 is going to go up multiply by the whole thing so I will now have cancellation of that and the divided by 24 would have gone up to the other side becoming times 24. So of course if you can't do them in one step you would take well you would just write one more step and it wouldn't hurt and do whatever it takes un until you actually you know get what it was going on. This is 0.24 dm cube must have value and must have unit. This unit is in dm cube because this is 24 dm cube per mole. One mole of any gas occupy 24 dm cube per mole. So this is in dm cube, this is in dm cube. So this answer there, 0.24 dm cube of hydrogen gas there. Now part two, explain why a different volume of hydrogen measured at room temperature and pressure is formed when you have 0.65 gram of iron is reacted with excess sulfuric acid. Why do you get different volume of hydrogen? Well, this volume of hydrogen depends on if you use the same mass of this, but you know, iron has a different relative atomic mass. So this green thing, which I highlighted there, this will be different for iron. Even though you use the same mass, iron has a different relative atomic mass. So iron metal has a different relative atomic mass. 
at relative atomic mass is a definition as stated in the year 9 chemical formula in the question is the average mass average mass of all the isotopes of the element and this is relative to 1 over 12 1 over 12 the mass of one atom of carbon 12 year 9 definition okay here's a different relative atomic mass which is ar uh, of 56 in the periodic table compared to 65 for the AR of zinc and because that number at the bottom will be different 0.65 divided by a different number multiplied by 24 and therefore give you a different volume of H2 that's why it's only one mark there part B so you have a mixture of iron powder and zinc powder you have a mixture this is tricky when the reaction stops you add in some sodium hydroxide drop by drop and then until the NaOH is in excess describe what you would observe observe so this is part of pepper tree practical qualitative analysis well I mean depending on whatever curriculum you're doing it could be called something else uh, for your practical paper but you will have this thing called qualitative analysis it could even be in experimental planning and designs because it could be an alternative to practical as well because those things can come in theory such as this structured paper and then you're gonna explain the reactions that take place how many marks is that this is four marks so there should be two marks for the observations and two marks for the explanation the observation includes what happened when you add a little bit and what happened in excess well you have iron you have iron 2 plus because when we did the reaction earlier we got iron 2 sulfate iron 2 plus sulfate so 4 2 minus iron 2 there so what we get is we have fe2 plus aqueous and we have zinc 2 plus aqueous this is a mixture so you will get both things right so zinc hydroxide zinc hydroxide would be a white precipitate but then this one will be a reddish brown precipitate so we see a reddish brown precipitate reddish brown precipitate forms so and then we also see a white precipitate forms but this one is going to be tricky to see because you know this is tricky to observe because obviously this is against the colored solid background and what will happen then is in excess what happened in excess in excess and then OH aqueous we know the zinc hydroxide would dissolve okay would dissolve in excess and OH but this reddish brown PPT would not dissolve so uh, reddish brown precipitate remains insoluble reddish brown precipitate so we don't use the PPT abbreviation never in theory paper never an alternative to practical paper as well so this thing remains insoluble in excess and OH but the white precipitate would have dissolved but the white precipitate which was quite tricky to observe would have dissolved so we would have seen some of the precipitate dissolve so you could have said some of the precipitate dissolve because it might be hard to see the precipitate there so what can I say a mixture so in this mixture in this mixture they want the explanation right so both the iron 2 plus aqueous and also the zinc 2 plus aqueous would form their respective metal hydroxide so metal hydroxides are mostly insoluble they come out as precipitates in a precipitation reaction so this is FeOH twice solid which is a reddish brown uh, I already mentioned that it's a precipitate I already mentioned that it's reddish brown and then ZnOH twice which is white precipitate I should really mention this white precipitate is actually quite tricky to observe so against the color background let's use a different color ink 
So if I think about formula, Fe2 plus and OH minus, you have the valency of the ion based on the charges of the ion. Ion 2 plus because there was a stated earlier in the beginning of the question when you had the reaction between iron powder and excess sulfuric acid, you got iron 2 plus in the iron 2 sulfate, zinc 2 plus in the zinc sulfate. So Fe2 plus and OH minus, you do cross multiply by doing crisscrossing the exchange of the valency tells you how many of the ions you actually have. This is lowest common multiple. In primary school mathematics, you will use bracket to indicate that you have two of the oxygen and two of the hydrogen, two of the hydroxide ions. And since we have zinc 2 plus, where the formula is also divalent cation, divalent because plus two, they are cations because they are positively charged, it's also going to be Z and bracket OH twice there. But this is white precipitate, whereas the iron 2 hydroxide, iron 2 hydroxide, because the oxidation number of the iron there is plus 2, reddish brown precipitate there. Um, what else can I say? Um, I should probably include the stat symbol of the zinc hydroxide. I was going to say something, I forgot what I was I going to say already. Oh yeah, uh, against the colored background, so against the reddish brown. colored, the white precipitate might be difficult to see. The white precipitate might be difficult to observe, but there is something very interesting because in excess, in excess and the OH aqueous, the zinc hydroxide would dissolve. The zinc hydroxide precipitate would dissolve. So there's the white precipitate. It would dissolve into a colorless solution. So they're asking for explanation. But since we're doing chemistry, I could really write, you know, a couple of equations for you, to be honest. So when I have iron 2 plus aqueous plus 2 OH minus, I'm writing equation for the precipitation reaction, a classic year 9 ionic equation, precipitation reaction, a classic year 9 ionic equation, complete with the stat symbol. And you will get the correct formula of the insoluble precipitate. And then why? Why is the zinc hydroxide soluble in excess? This is the key factor. So the zinc hydroxide is a white solid precipitate. It dissolves in excess hydroxide ions, and they will give you the zinc with four hydroxide. But now the zinc is plus two, and you have four times minus one. So you get a two minus charge, and this is aqueous ion. So the counter ion there is really going to be two of the Na+. If you want, you can write two NaOH, and you will get two of the Na+, with these uh, two minus an ion there. So this is going to be colorless solution, so aqueous solution there, it will dissolve in excess NOH, the iron 2 hydroxide doesn't do that. Okay, so hopefully that should explain the whole story there. Part C, the products of heating iron 2 sulfate, so Fe2 plus SO4 2 minus, so what you're going to get is 1 is to 1 ratio, Fe SO4. Iron 3 oxide, iron 3 oxide is iron 3 plus O2 minus, your valency there based on the charges, 3 and 2. Crisscrossing, LCM, exchange the valency. You get how many of these ions. You will need 2 of that iron 3 plus on the left, and you will need 3 of that O2 minus on the right-hand side. So this is going to be Fe2O3 there. Sulfur dioxide is SO2, 1 sulfur, 2 oxygen. Sulfur trioxide, 1 sulfur, three oxygens and you will know this as part of contact process case study in the syllabus as you know contact process would have made you sulfuric acid in the industry explain how you can tell the reaction involves an oxidation uh, what is going to involve here uh, oh yeah okay so the iron 2 the iron 2 sulfate becomes iron 2 oxide so you see what happened to the iron you have you have gained, you have gained oxygen, but that is not really a good indication, is it? Uh, have a look at the iron 2 becoming iron 3. So this is your reactant, you heated the reactant and you get the product. So these are the products. 
So I don't need to write the equation really because I can see from the oxidation number already. So I can say the ion increases in oxidation number. So I'm going to start out with oxidation number first. I'm aware that you know some students don't do oxidation number in the curriculum. So this is from from plus two in iron two sulfate. So I'm going to write the correct notation, which is from Fe bracket plus two. This means the oxidation number of iron is plus two in iron two sulfate. And then this increases to iron plus three in iron three oxide. With this kind of definitions, do not try and use the gaining and losing oxygen. It's actually quite difficult for you to see what is going on, to be honest. Yeah. So here, what can I say? Increase in oxidation number is oxidation. Increase in oxidation number is oxidation as stated in the syllabus. Now, what about for people who don't do oxidation number? Well, I've just talked to you about iron 2 plus going to iron 3 plus. So how do you increase in your positive charge? You must have lost electrons. So what I can say is the iron 2 lost electrons to give you iron 3. And when you lose electrons, that is going to give you oxidation. So the iron 2 plus in FeSO4 loses electrons to form Fe3 plus in Fe2O3. I should really I should really write this somewhere else because I'm running out of space. So I could really write this iron 2 plus going to iron 3 plus plus electrons. So loss of electrons is oxidation. So part of the acronym, well Rick, oxidation involved the loss of electrons there. So very clearly again that is to do with oxidation. So you could choose either one depending on whichever one is in the syllabus. I personally prefer oxidation number because that's the easiest one. 2 becoming 3 plus 2 becoming plus 3 there. Okay, so part 2, this is about chemical test for sulfur dioxide. This is test for gas, any of the tests for cations, anion, gases, flame tests of cations new in the 2023 all level syllabus, already been present in the IGCSE syllabus for a number of years. So these things are all stuff which could be asked in theory paper such as here. So you need to test sulfur dioxide with an oxidizing agent. So you know, uh, what do I need? So use a filter paper and this has to be soak or dip in this acidified, acidified KMnO4 aqueous solution which is purple in color. This is an oxidizing agent and as it oxidizes the SO2 to SO3, itself will get reduced. So the purple colored, the purple color of acidified KMnO4 aqueous on the filter paper will turn colorless. Kind of look colorless on the filter paper actually, uh, or very pale pink. So very pale pink is quite difficult to see. It almost look colorless, but you know, from intensely purple colored to becoming something colorless, resembling pep, uh, well, pale pink resembling colorless to some extent. That you know, you know that there's already sulfur dioxide being present because oxidizing agent. This is stated in the redox topic. Very very famous oxidizing agent. This is called acidified KMnO4. If you have to write it in words, it's called acidified potassium manganate seventh without the whole thing without the acidified you will not get the correct answer without the roman numeral seventh you will not get any credit at all KMnO4 is an ionic compound with a zero oxidation number potassium potassium is a group one metal essentially what you have is k plus mno4 minus giant ionic structure ionic bonds between cation and anion there. So zero is the overall oxidation number of the compound, plus one for the group one metal cation, which always have a plus one oxidation number in a compound. Manganese is what you want to find. Each oxygen is minus two oxidation number in a compound. You have four of it, so four times minus two. Manganese there is going to be zero, and then plus eight minus one. Manganese there is plus seven. Oxidation number must have signs and value. VII there refer to plus seven oxidation number. This is purple solution. 
oxidizing agent is defined as a substance that oxidizes the other substance. So it oxidizes other substance, but what happened to itself? This second bit of the definition is very important as well, and you must not miss out in the complete definition. Itself gets reduced. When it oxidizes the other substance, itself gets reduced. This is manganese plus 7. This is in MnO4 minus as it defined. And this is purple in solution. And this one will go to, well, it will go to kind of pale pink or not pale pink. What was I talking about? Uh, well, pale pink actually. So it will go to like kind of colorless slash pale pink. Very, very mild color. Uh, that you know you've done this in titration as well i believe or at least you have seen the video tutorial of it this is manganese plus two in the mn2 plus aqueous species there so it get reduced from manganese plus seven to manganese plus two because it acted as a good oxidizing agent this is the proper test of sulfur dioxide as stated in your two pages table of results in qualitative analysis paper three practical you will never ever be given those table of results Test for cations, anions, gases, and flame tests for cations never ever be given those results in a theory paper. That's it really for that overall 10 mark question. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to click the button on the bottom right to subscribe to my channel. Follow me at ptet.chemistry. That's at ptet.chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Telegram to get connected. And I'll see you in the next tutorial video.